and we need to allow the Lord to establish in our heart how important it is to follow him. Following him has everything to do with us becoming and being and fulfilling what it is he created us to be. Matthew chapter 4, verse 19, the scripture says, and I have these references up there on the board so you'll be able to follow along with me today in terms of uh, knowing where we're going to flip. Mm -hmm. We're going to read the word of God together and allow the Lord to help us see the continuity through scripture, the message that he has for us. Chapter 4, verse 19, Jesus said this, he, say, he saith unto them, Follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. Follow me. So we're so thankful that his call is to follow with purpose. It's not just about blindly lead, following our leader, but following him so that a purpose can be fulfilled within us, to be fishers of men. Praise God. And in John chapter 1, and verse 43, I'll have you turn here with me very quickly. Right verse 43, sorry. Yeah. See you guys looking for it. And here we see the day following. The day following where uh, Matthew chapter 4 and verse 19, if I would follow that thought through with us to help set context, you would find out that that is where Andrew, Peter, James, and John were called. They were fishing with their father, and, and that's why he used the analogy of making fishers of men. So these four were called in the day following. So now we have context here. John 1, 43 says, The day following Jesus would go forth into Galilee, Galilee, and he findeth Philip, and he saith unto him, and he says, Follow me. And so now Philip has heard the call and, 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 and begins to follow. And Philip goes and he finds Nathaniel. And he says to him that we, we have found the Christ. And so Nathaniel was challenging him, can any good thing come out of Nazareth? And here we see that Jesus had his encounter with, with Nathaniel as well. And so now we have Andrew, Peter, James, John, Philip, and Nathaniel. Later on, we see in Matthew chapter 9, we're going to flip back over to uh, Matthew. We do not have to read Mark chapter 2, 14, and Luke 5, 27. Those are parallel passages. So we'll just turn over to Matthew chapter 9 and verse 9. where we find him calling Matthew or Levi. And Jesus passed forth from thence and he saw a man named Matthew sitting at the receipt of custom. And he saith unto him, Follow me. And bless God, what did he do? And he arose and he followed him. Amen. That's the smart thing to do. Amen. Mm -hmm. Praise God. So Jesus calls his disciples. He called them while he was here physically in presence and he still calls his disciples today follow him. Amen? So this next slide here, many say that they will follow. Many say that they will follow. Turn back one chapter, Matthew chapter 8. And let's look at verse 19 together. Again, the parallel passage will be Luke chapter 9 and verse 57. And here we can see that a certain scribe come to him and said, Master, I will follow thee whithersoever thou goest. He come of his own accord. Jesus didn't necessarily call him. Jesus didn't necessarily say, follow me. You know, but he's so attractive. The things of God are so attractive sometimes. You know, watching the people of God be blessed, as we're learning on Wednesday, Psalms chapter 1. Watching our lives flourish. Have employment while employment rates at all-time highs. Having houses and jobs and, and children and all these things in our life is it, really attractive. And people many times will say, oh, I'll follow Jesus. I'll follow. Isn't that true? And you'll see them for maybe but a moment. They'll come and they'll go. Here again, we see not only that this, this scribe who comes to Jesus said, I will follow. But we, we find in Mark chapter 10, I would like you to uh, turn with me to this reference instead of looking at Matthew. Let's go to Mark chapter 10. In verse 21. 
And the parallel passages of Matthew 19, 21 and Luke 18, 22. And here we see that this rich young ruler who had come to, to love on Jesus and say, what must I do to have eternal life? That Jesus responded to him. And I love the way that Mark says this. And I pulled in in my notes here, and I will read this to you with, with a, a, a parenthetical thought that came from Matthew chapter 19. Then Jesus, beholding him, loved him. The man just stopped me in my tracks before I could even finish the thought. You know, he loves us, even when we're not following him. It's when we begin to show an interest and a heart towards him that he really can pour out his grace. And this young man wanted to know what he could do to have eternal life. And I've done all these things since my youth, Lord. I've kept the law. I've tried to do everything to be blameless. And Jesus looked at him, and he didn't despise him. He didn't have a self-righteous attitude like, you're so far off. He loved him. And I think that's a perfect picture of our Savior and how he loves us, no matter how many rabbit trails we run. No matter how many times we miss the mark, he loves us. And we come back to him and we say, Lord, what must I do? And before he lays out a laundry list for you to follow, he says, son, I love you. Daughter, I love you. And I say, thank you, Lord. Without his love, I don't know what I would do, how I would feel, how I'd be able to pursue. I love him because I love him, but I would feel empty not knowing he loves me. So I'm so thankful that he precedes his commands, his life, his ways to us with his love. So we can be assured in our hearts that God loves us. And when I follow him, I know I'm following one that loves me. And it's not going to do something to hurt me or to harm me. And so I'm so thankful for that. That gives us great peace and confidence in our God. He's not a, an austere man, a hard man like Scripture records. That man that thought he was hard and austere found his way, his place, what? In outer darkness where there was weeping and gnashing of teeth, Scripture says. The person that has the misconception of who God is does not receive from God in the end. That ought to make us think, amen? Yeah. Praise God. Our God loves us. He's a loving Father. I know we fall short. I know we can miss the mark. But God loves us. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. And Jesus, beholding him, loved him and said unto him. And here we see in, in Mark, it says, One thing thou lackest, but you know what Matthew says? If thou wilt be perfect. Oh, why did I have to include that today? You know why I had to include it. Because God has spoken to us about be perfect, even as your Father in heaven is perfect. Be mature. Be a person that doesn't sit there and look at your limitations, but look at who you can be in Christ, because you can do all things through Christ which strengthens you. You can be the Son of God with the power to be able to change the world if you just consider who you are in Him. If thou will be perfect. It's one thing I lack. Maybe, maybe you and I lack more than one thing today. Maybe we lack several things in our lives. But still Jesus isn't here pointed out to condemn us. He isn't pointed out to belittle us. He says, I love you. And he loves us. And it's with great care he gives us the things that we need. And he says, this is what you need. And so our hearts are to be open and yield to him today to to what he would speak to us, that we can be strengthened, that we can be changed and transformed from being weak to being strong in his grace. He says, this one thing you lack, go thy way and sell whatsoever thou hast, give to the poor, thou shalt have treasure in heaven, and come and take up the cross and follow me. We must realize that in this young man's case, he was holding his life's possessions, his life's efforts, his life's accomplishments way too precious to him. He needed to let them go. And I thank God that we're going to close out today with a man who gave us an example 
of who didn't think it was worth anything to hold on to anything down here. Not just Jesus. I'm talking about a disciple and follower. So we have Jesus as the Lord asking us to follow, but we have men that have paved the way that we can also follow that said, you know what, I counted all but done. Anything I've attained, it just doesn't matter. And he presses forward, and he presses towards that mark. That he might be able to obtain the Lord. So here, in Luke chapter 9 and verse 59, I'll have you go forward with me one book. We see, again, the topic is, many say they will follow. In Luke chapter 9 and verse 59, we find this verse. That a, a certain man said to him in verse 57, Lord, I will follow thee whither, whithersoever thou goest. <laughs> and Jesus said unto him, Boxes have holes, birds of the air have nests, but the son of man hath nowhere to lay his head. And he said unto another, he said, Follow me. And this young man said back to the Lord, he says, But suffer me first to go and bury my father. Maybe he was an old man, he had an old father, who knows? Back then, the life expectancy wasn't quite what it is today. So I anticipate this was a young man. He called, follow me. Okay, Lord, but let me go bury my father. Probably a, young, a man not much older than many of us in here today. Let me go and bury my father. A couple verses up, Luke chapter 9, verse 61. We find another man. Lord, I will follow thee, but let me first go and bid them farewell, which are at my home and at my house. Jesus said, No man having put his hand to the plow and looking back is fit for the kingdom of God. It's not time to counter press clippings, to go back and let everybody know what's happened. Try to explain why my life is different. Why I'm radical, fanatical for Jesus. It's, it's about moving forward with Jesus, following him. It's not about taking time out to try to wrap up the loose ends. Try to close up past business. The old things have passed away. Behold, everything becomes new. So Jesus' word to him was, you're not fit to look back. Don't worry about those that might not understand what's happening. Follow. Follow me. And that's our call today. Our call is to follow him. Not look back, but to go forward. In Matthew chapter 8 and verse 22, this is the response he gave to the man in Luke chapter 9 and verse 59. He says, but Jesus said unto him, follow me and let the dead bury the dead. It's not time for us to consider what I have to accomplish in this world. If Christ hasn't called you to accomplish it, it, it means nothing. It absolutely means nothing. But I have fields to tend to. I have marriages to take care of. I have children to raise. I have, if Christ hasn't called you to do those things, they mean nothing to him. The only thing that's going to matter is what he calls you to. You follow him. And in that we know that we will take care of our lands. We will take care of our families. We will take care of our children. But they shall never take the place of following God in Amen. our life. Ever. Yeah. Amen. See, there's a difference in our priorities, isn't there? And he says, let the dead bury their dead. We are not dead. But we are alive in Christ. Amen. The true cost of discipleship Matthew chapter 16 and verse 24, turn with me if you will. The parallel passages, for those of you that are full of curiosity, Mark chapter 8 verse 34, and Luke chapter 9 verse 23. I love how the Word of God has continuity. That's why I love the synoptic Gospels. It says, let every word be established out of the mouth of two or three witnesses. Here we have a few people that have written and recorded the scripture, amen? So we have a safe word. So in Matthew chapter 16 and verse 24, Jesus said unto his disciples, 
If any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. Now this morning I'm excited. Because i got to admit sometimes, you know, let a man deny himself, take up his cross and deny, you know, we, we, we look at that concept. Let him, let him deny himself and take up his cross. But we don't concentrate on the and. Follow me. And. Follow me. We look at the death to self we look at how much it hurts. We look at everything that we give up. We, we kind of celebrate and make a little banner over that. Well, I'm the spiritual one today because I'm dying to self. What about the following? Jesus is calling you. Follow. If you'll follow, you don't got time to celebrate what you gave up. Yeah? <laughs> Amen. Because all that is a sign, kind of a self-pity party. Yeah. Oh, look at me. I could be out sowing my wild oats. I could be out rocking it with the best of them. I could, I could go ahead and party it up. Wine, women, walleye, right? I could do what I want to do. But look at me. Jesus is saying if I follow him, I ain't got time to look at what I've lost. I ain't got time to consider what I've left. That's why he says, yeah, follow me. To follow Jesus is better to sit, than to sit there and try to reflect on what my life could have been. In fact, when we look, I believe that's the fulfillment of the verse right there that we just read. When we look at what our life could have been outside of Christ, he says, any man that looks back is not fit for the kingdom Amen. of God. And that's exactly the fulfillment of that truth. Amen. It's like, I don't want to get stuck there. All I got to do, all you and I got to do, let's be honest, all you and I got to do is sit here today and sit there and say, you know, if I just choose to stop coming to church, to stop fellowship with my brothers and sisters, I still love God. I'm going to just stop this. Because I got better things to do with my time. I could be riding my little tractor around my yard. I don't got a yard big enough for a track, but the guy across the street does. So that's why I'm picking on him. <laughs> I, I could be riding my tractor around my yard. I could be going to the beach. I could be doing my thing. I could be doing all these things. Jesus, you are not fit for the kingdom. Amen. Amen. And you know what I've done? I've just done, I've, I've opened up a huge torment in my soul now. Now I'm betwixt two. A past life and a life he's called me to. How in the world am I going to partake of the joy of this new life if I stay in a position like that. So far be it from me and far be it from you and I to take that attitude. Let the Lord deal with our thoughts that way. Do not entertain what could be Amen. because you're not entertaining him who says keep your eyes on him. Look unto the Jesus, the author and finish your faith. Look unto him and follow him. If we'll follow him, we won't have time to be looking back at what, what should have been, what have been, could have been, all that good stuff. <laughs> Amen. Amen. The true cause of discipleship. We'll deny ourselves and take up a cross and follow him. Wherever he goes, the cross is going to turn. You know, I'm going to be taking my cross wherever it's got to go. I ain't going to look back and see where it came from. Mm -hmm. John chapter 12 and verse 26. Jesus said this. He said, if any man serve me, let him follow me. And where I am, there shall also my servant be. It gets better than that, but let me stop here for a moment and look at the scripture with you. John chapter 12, verse 26. If any man serve me, let him follow me. Okay, Lord, we know that's a great, you know, he talked to us about following today. Where I am, there shall my servant be. Ooh, he just tied the weight. He just tied the, the absolute promise of what he's saying talk hard now. If I will find a way to keep looking forward, to follow him, to do what he wants me to do, whatever it might be, he says, I'll be right there with you. If I will serve Christ, he will be right there with me. If I'll follow him, I'm not alone. Praise God. But if I don't, if I stay back in that place where I'm stuck between two opinions, and I don't follow <clears throat> then I don't have his presence either. He's not promising that he's with me right there. Sure, he'd be there if I call upon him. The Lord is nigh unto all that will call upon him. But he's not going to be actively at work, engaging and fellowshipping in my heart, guiding me, giving me joy, giving me hope. You know what it's like to be fellowshipping with God? You can get the worst news in the world. It's like, okay. You know what I'm saying? When, when you're active in your fellowship with God, He gives you strength that goes beyond peace, that passes understanding. You're just way beyond it. You don't suffer. But boy, you get that same piece of truth when you're down and you're not fellowshipping with God. I'm not saying you're a Christian. I'm not saying you're not a believer, but you get that same piece of knowledge and it's like it just takes you down. 
You don't even know how to handle it. And life becomes all about, whoa, is me. <laughs> whoa. <laughs> Yeah, I like it. Whoa, it's almost like putting the rain on. Whoa, your life stopped. Don't pass go, don't collect your 200 bucks. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> yeah, you know what that was all Neo. about. Yeah, Neo. <laughs> yeah. Great line. I said it gets better than that. He says, there, where I am, there my servant shall be. If any man serve me, him will my father honor. Oh. oh, the reason why that's getting so good is because in a couple sides, we're going to talk about the ministry and life of a believer. Of oh, someone that follows. Why will we be endued with such a great life? Because our father's honoring us. And we're talking about that a little bit about Psalms chapter 1. Blessed is the man that walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the way of sinners, nor sits in the seat of scornful, right? But his delight is it. In the law of the Lord, and in his law, he meditates day and night. No matter if it's good times, bad times, light times, or dark times. Amen? So here today we follow, or we find that the Lord said that if we will serve him, that's where he's in. That's where he is in our life. If we follow and we serve, the Lord will be with us. And guess what? In the Lord being with us, anything we ask, we shall receive. Because our Father will honor. But I'm getting ahead of myself. I said that's two slides down. So this next slide. How and why Jesus' disciples follow. I quoted a little bit during worship. Couldn't help it. Just couldn't help it. Amen? John chapter 10. Let's go here because all three verses, all three references will be coming right from here. In John chapter 10, he is the great shepherd. And so we thank him for his love and his care for us. Verse 4, he says that he puts forth his own sheep, and he goeth before them. That's what I like. He's not just pushing you out there and saying, okay, go and do life. <laughs> he says, okay, now we're going to do life. Because if you look at this chapter, you find out that he lets you back out. He lets you back out to find pastures, leads you into green pastures. Right? Amen? Prosperous pastures. Pastures of fulfillment. Pastures of, of joy. He leads you into places of goodness. I know a lot of times you're stuck in the valley of shadow of death. But God puts you forth into his pasture. And he says, now, now we're going to go. But guess what? I'm going to go before you. And you're going to follow me. Is that not what verse 4 says there? I'm going to put you out so we can go now. We're going to get this thing and get some done. We're going to have life, life, money here now. About ready to be blessed and prosper. Verse 3 comes this week at Wednesday. You're about to find out that you're going to bring forth your fruit in your season. Your leaf ain't going to wither. Amen? You're going to find out that everything I've purposed and designed for you is going to happen as long as you will. Now, we're outside that gate. You follow me. If you follow me, it's going to be nothing but yes and amen and him. Mm -hmm. Nothing but blessing. Nothing but joy. Nothing but prosperity. Nothing but God's goodness for your life. And so that's what he says in verse 4 there. He says that he will go before them. And here's what's beautiful today. While I was quoting it during worship, is it says the sheep will follow him where they know his voice. <clears throat> today, you know, I'm thankful to count myself pretty lowly little animal. A sheep. <laughs> a lamb. <laughs> not, not an attractive looking thing, but <laughs> praise God. I am. I want to follow him. So I count myself to be one of his lambs. One of the sheep of his pasture. Verse 5, he says, a stranger will they not follow, but will flee from him for they know not the voice of strangers. Now let's jump down a little further in verse 27. In verse 27, Jesus says this. He says, My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. 
and I know them, and they follow me. Today, that's the, the desire of every believer here, is to continue to hear his voice because we follow it. Sometimes the voice, voices in this world are so loud and overwhelming. They distract us so bad. It's hard to say, I've heard the voice of Jesus today and I know what to do. Amen. And there's other times the voice of Jesus is so clear, <laughs> rings so clear, <laughs> That you can't help but sit there and wrestle with it in your heart, denying it almost. If you don't obey it, you know you're going to be denying it. I had one of those experiences this morning. I know that. <sighs> because Jesus loves us. And he says, my sheep hear my voice. Whether I wanted to hear what I heard this morning or not does not matter. But after about five minutes of wrestling with it, I knew, okay, Lord, amen, yes, I'll do it. <laughs> Why else is my mind wrestling with this? Because you have spoken something to me. Amen. My sheep hear my voice, and they follow me. And the peace comes when I stop wrestling with what he said. I say, okay. doesn't make it any more pleasant, the thing I have to do, but it makes it in line with his will now. It makes it something that he said. I said, okay, amen, and his peace can fill me now. <laughs> so you know. You know the voice of the Lord. You hear him. Sometimes it's looking for direction and vision. And other times, he's giving you vision and direction. And you're sitting there going, oh, well, you know, should I do that? But you can't get your mind off of it, so let me submit this to you. That's his voice. Amen. If you're wrestling with it, you're probably wrestling with him. Not all the time, but most of the time. So my sheep hear my voice. I know them, and they follow me. Praise God. So the life and the ministry of those that follow Jesus. Let's look at this next slide here. Mark chapter 16 and verse 17. These are great references. If we'll go ahead and have Justin turn to Mark 16, verse 17. Steve, turn to Romans chapter 14, verse 19. Craig, turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 1. Jesse, you got Hebrews chapter 12, verse 14. And 1 Thessalonians 5, Scott, I'll give that one to you. Verse 15. There's five more verses on the next slide, so I'm going to pick on the rest of you. Don't worry. <laughs> We're going to read these together. Amen? Amen? All right. Mark chapter 16, Justin, verse 17. What we got? Read it nice and loud for our recorded today. Okay. And these signs will follow those who believe. In my name they will cast out demons, and they will speak with new tongues. Amen. These signs, the power of God, the, the, the favor of God, whom God is honoring because we are serving Him. Amen? Amen. Praise the Lord. Steve has Romans chapter 14, verse 19. Therefore let us pursue the things which make for peace, and the things by which one may edify one another. Amen. And in the King James, I love it, it says follow. So I will, I will point out why it's here. Let us therefore follow after the things which make for peace. Amen. And where we may edify one another. Now, who did I give? I think correct. First Corinthians 14, 1 Corinthians 14.1. Follow the way of love and eager, eagerly desire spiritual gifts, especially the gift of prophecy. Amen. Follow after love. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Jesse, did I give you Hebrews chapter 12? Yeah. All right. Follow peace with all men and holiness, without which no man shall see the Lord. Oh, bless the Lord. Today is all about following. We're going to follow peace with all men and holiness. 1 Thessalonians 5, 15, Scott. See that no one renders evil for evil to anyone, but always pursue what is both good for yourselves and for all. Amen. Follow that which is good. Follow that which is good, both among yourself and to all men. Isn't that good? Right. And to all men. Okay, next slide. Got five more references. So let's pick on K for 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 11. Penny, can you pull up 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 22? Uh, Corey, kid, you got a Bible in you? Uh, let's pick up uh, 2 Thessalonians chapter 3, verse 7. It's the electronic version, right? Yeah. <laughs> uh, Nicole, you got a Bible on you? No, no Bible. Jim, you got a Bible on you? Okay, Jim's got Hebrew chapter 13 and verse 7. I think I have one more there, don't I? 1 Peter chapter 2 and verse 21. 
There we go. We'll be Nicole. <laughs> All right. So let's start out here. We got Kay with with uh, 1 Timothy chapter 6 and verse 11. But thou, O man of God, flee these things and follow after righteousness, godliness, faith, love, patience, goodness. Amen. See, we, we, we flee the things that would hinder us in our walk, right? And we follow after the righteousness and goodness, the faith, the love, patience, being the second. Timothy chapter 2, verse 22. Paul thought it was so good he had to say it again. Amen. Go ahead. <laughs> Flee also youthful lust, but follow righteousness, faith, charity, peace, with them that call on the Lord out of a pure heart. Amen. Praise God. We, that's the things we need to follow after. Amen. Praise God. 2 Thessalonians chapter 3, and verse 7. For yourselves know how ye ought to follow us, for we behave not ourselves disorderly among you. Amen. I want to point out why this verse comes to mind is because we're to follow them that follow Christ. Paul said, follow me as I follow Christ. So when you see good people, godly people, righteous people, not of their own righteousness, but good, godly people here in the earth following the Lord, I guarantee that's somebody you want to follow. Amen. Amen. You don't want to get stuck in your own little world. You want to follow them. In fact, I'm reminded of something that Jesus said. His disciples go, but Lord, there's, there's folks over there casting out demons in your name, but they're not following us. And Jesus said, leave them alone. If you want to look at it, leave them alone. He said, they that are not against me are for me. Amen? It's okay when you see good people walking with God. It's good to rub elbows with them. It's good to build each other up. It's good to encourage each other. You're supposed to follow one another as they follow Christ. Amen? Yeah. It's a good one. Okay. And we have our next uh, scripture here. Hebrews chapter 13, verse 7. Jim? Remember them which have the rule over you who have spoken unto you the word of God. <laughs> Whose faith follow, considering the end of their conversation. Amen. Praise God. Look at that. Every time we lock arms with somebody, we encourage somebody, and we, we follow Christ as each other follows Christ, we're supporting and we're building up the kingdom of God. You know, we're considering the end of each other's salvations. You know, we're looking at that, that moment when we know we'll no longer be here, and we'll be able to say, I'll see you on the other side. Amen. 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 Praise God. Can we back up one slide to so I can break those down, please? Yes. And and uh, Nicole, you have First Peter chapter two, verse twenty one. You can back that slide up if you want. There you go. For to this, for to this you were called, because Christ also suffered for us, leaving us an example that you should follow his steps. Hey man, we should follow in his steps. So Christ Jesus, he's the one, he's the Lord, he's he's the great shepherd of our soul, he's calling us to follow. And we're to follow him because he's left us an example. Thank God it's not just a heavenly example. It was a physical, earthly example. Something that we were able to watch how he dealt with stuff. Amen? Praise God. So our high call today. Ooh, this is, this is a high call too. I brought this. This is really hard scripture. I know this. This next scripture, Revelation chapter 14, 4. I actually have it up on the board for us. This is a high call. <laughs> this is a high call. Because I look at this like, oh God, help me. Help me to follow. These are they which were not defiled with women, for they are virgins. These are they which follow the Lamb whithersoever he goeth. These were redeemed from among men, being the first fruits unto God and unto the Lamb. Now there's people that follow so passionately that this is them. God isn't trying to exclude us maybe because of marriage. The desire of my heart is to be one of these that would be found following the Lamb wherever He goes. Amen. That's a high call. Our next slide here is in Philippians chapter 3. and We studied this just last time we did our Bible study. Verse 12, Paul says this. He says, not as though as I had already attained, either were already perfect. But I follow after, if that I may apprehend that which... Also, I am apprehended of Christ Jesus. We know our, our living is the pursuit of the Lord. Even when we've attained, we're to not consider ourselves to have attained. We're to continue to pursue. And so today I want to close out with this. I want to read chapter 3 of Philippians with you. I've got it up on the board so we don't have to look at it in the Bible. And it's from the message. It's a translation today. It's from the message. And I, I really appreciated the way this was worded. And I know it will bless you. So that's why we're going to close with it. 
Paul starts out, he says, that's about it, friends. Be glad in God. I don't mind repeating what I've written or what I've preached to you over and over and over. What I've written in earlier letters, and I hope you don't mind hearing it again. Better safe than sorry. <laughs> so here goes. Steer clear of the barking dogs. Those religious busybodies, all bark and no bite. All they're interested in is appearances. Knife-happy circumcisers, I call them. The real believers are the ones the Spirit of God leads to work away at this ministry, filling the air with Christ's praise as we do. We couldn't carry this off by our own efforts, and we know it, even though we can list what many might think are impressive credentials. You know my pedigree, Paul, a legitimate uh, birth, circumcised on the eighth day, an Israelite from the elite tribe of Benjamin, a strict and devout adherent to God's law, a fiery defender of the purity of my religion, even to the point of persecuting the church, a meticulous observer of everything set down in God's law book. The very credentials these things, these people are waving around as something special, I'm tearing up and throwing out with the trash. Along with everything else I used to take credit for. And why? Because of Christ. Yes, all these things I once thought were so important are gone from my life. Compared to the high privilege of knowing Christ Jesus as my master, firsthand, everything I once thought I had going for me is insignificant. Dog dumb. I've dumped it all on the trash so that I could embrace Christ and be embraced by Him. I didn't want some petty, inferior brand of righteousness that comes from keeping a list of rules when I couldn't get the when I could get the robust kind that comes from trusting Christ, God's righteousness. I gave up all that inferior stuff so I could know Christ personally, experience His resurrection power, and be a partner in His suffering. And go all the way with him to death itself. If there was any way to get in on the resurrection from the dead, I wanted to do it. I'm not saying that I have this all together, that I, that I have it made. But I am well on my way, reaching out for Christ who has so wondrous, wondrously reached out for me. Friends, don't get me wrong. By no means do I count myself an expert in all of this. But I've got my eye on the goal where God is beckoning us onward to Jesus. I'm off and I'm running and I'm not turning back. He's following. He's following. So let us keep focused on that goal. Those of us who want everything God has for us. If any of you want something else in mind, let, let something else less than what God has told that total commitment, God will clear you of your blurred vision and you'll see it. <clears throat> Now that we're on the right track, let's stay on it. No more rabbit chasing. Stick with me, friends. Keep track of those you see running the same course, headed for the same goal. There are many out there taking other paths, choosing other goals, and trying to get you to go along with them. I've warned you of them many times. Sadly, I'm having to do it again. All they want is easy street. They hate Christ's cross. But Easy Street is a dead-end street. Those who live there make their bellies their gods. Belches are their praise, and all they can think of is their appetites, the things they desire. But there's far more to life for us. We are citizens of the high heaven. We are waiting for the arrival of the Savior, the Master, Jesus Christ, who will transform our earthly bodies into glorious bodies like his own. He'll make us beautiful and whole with the same powerful skill by which he is putting everything as it should be under and around him. Amen. Amen. I could really appreciate this morning the way that that read. Father, we thank you this morning for the call to follow. We're thankful, Father, that we do hear your voice. We're your sheep. And so, Lord, we, we partner up with you, Lord. Even as we're learning in Psalms chapter 1, blessed is the man that partners up with godly folks. We don't walk after the counsel of the ungodly, Lord. But Lord, we, we fulfill what, what we're supposed to do by love, serve one another. I remember that scripture that came up this morning. You owe no man nothing but to love them. 
Sometimes love means giving. Amen. Sometimes love means serving. Sometimes love means partnering up with. And that's what we saw when you called Abram out of his country, Haran. And you promised him. You said, if any man will bless thee, I will bless them. And likewise, you, you also said, if anyone don't support you, curses you, that you would, you would not support that man. You would allow curses to come upon them. So, Lord, today we see our lives. We see our lives in you as being those that can follow and serve and bless those that have gone before us, that are running this race with patience. Lord, that are pressing towards the, the goal, the prize. Lord, that, to be one with you. To have a, a relationship that fades not away. And so, Lord, because of that, Lord, we're blessed. We are also brought into that same blessing. Lord, you said that we couldn't give a, 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 that if we would give a righteous man an ear, Lord, we receive the righteous man's reward. If we would give a glass of water to even a disciple, we would receive the reward. And so today, Lord, we, we know we're in, your, we're in your favor. We're in your blessing. And I thank you, Father, as long as our heart is to follow, so shall it ever be. So we follow you, Lord. We pursue you, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for this passion in our lives to see your glory come. Lord, that we might be like you. So, Lord, we thank you today. We thank you for your word. And we thank you for the promise. Lord, of all the things that should follow, the signs and wonders, not because we seek those, but because our Father honors us. Amen. Oh, Lord, we just thank you, Lord. We thank you this morning for the kingdom power, the kingdom life. Lord, we're so grateful. So we thank you, Father, as we get ready to, to worship you in our tithes and our offerings. Lord, to worship you in remembrance of communion. You'll seal this word in our heart. That when everything comes to try to distract us, to make us deviate from your path, to just get in the trenches and fight it out with folks and fight it out with life, Lord, we're not going to do it. We're going to keep our eyes on you, Lord. We're going to follow you. We're going to let you fight our battles. Amen. You have our back. Thank you, Lord. So we love you and we thank you, Lord, for this time and this word. We ask, Lord, you would seal it, Lord, and we never forget it. In Jesus' name, we say, Amen. 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 Praise the Lord.